Welcome to the Military Millionaire Podcast. I'm your host, David Perret, and today we have a truly interesting and exciting episode with the one and only Matt Faircloth of, well, he's not of, but uh, an author for Bigger Pockets with Raising Private Capital, and we are going to dig into, uh, we, well, we tell some pretty funny stories, we get laughing, there's some swearing, it's, it, you know, this is not a necessarily a kid-friendly episode, but this episode is 90% about what you should do as an 18, 19, 20 year old looking to get interested in real estate. So this is like the beginner do's and don'ts. Uh, he gets asked all the time by service members what they should do. They're interested in real estate, younger gentlemen or, or women. And I get asked the same thing all the time. So we thought it would be fun to have a conversation with myself and the Matt Faircloth about what to do. So this is a really cool episode. It's really fun, really off the cuff. Uh, definitely stick through it and you'll get a lot out of it for sure. So as always, show notes are found at from military to slash podcast. Now relax and enjoy the show. You're listening to the military millionaire podcast, a show about real estate investing for the working class. Stay tuned as we explore ways to help you improve your finances, build wealth through real estate, and become a person that is worth knowing. Hey guys, on this podcast, we talk a lot about the roadblock to success for military members in getting started in real estate investing. For many of us, the barriers of time, location, and not having the right knowledge keep us from building wealth while serving our country. Well, let me tell you about Storehouse 310 Ventures. They get it. Storehouse 310 Ventures is owned by two active duty naval officers that love to make investing fun, lucrative, and have a passion for education, theirs and yours alike. They offer full turnkey rental properties in a market where the numbers make sense, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Milwaukee, home to the almost 2018 division titled Milwaukee Brewers, the well-known Miller Brewing Company, and a lot of delicious cheese. Storehouse 310's properties are fully renovated, leased, and have property management in place. Through their rigorous analysis and selection process, they do everything possible to ensure each rental property meets their high standards and offers fantastic returns. Storehouse 310s allows you to invest with confidence while you are living out of state. They have a network of lenders, insurance companies, contractors, a title company, and much more to serve you all along the way. There is absolutely no reason not to get started when you have the right teams and system in place. David and Stu, the owners of Storehouse 310, have been investing themselves for over 15 years. They are on a mission to help as many active duty, reserves, and military veterans create financial freedom through the power of real estate investing. They are honest, transparent, and they prioritize service and giving. They have even committed to give the first 10% of their profits to partner nonprofit organizations that support veteran causes. For more information about their program, send an email to podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Again, that is podcast at storehouse310turnkey.com. Tell David and Stu you heard about them through the Military Millionaire Podcast, and they will get you going down the right path. Hey, what's up, guys? Today's episode is brought to you by Fiverr. And Fiverr, for those of you who are not familiar, is a website full of freelancers and virtual assistants who can help you with your business. For example, the intro for my podcast was recorded and edited and the music provided by a freelancer on Fiverr for less than $40. The logo on my website, freelancer, less than $40. I have done a lot of fancy infographics for under $5 a piece I've had. I found an editor for my YouTube channel. Fiverr has basically any task you could ever want to outsource can be found at Fiverr.com. That is Fiverr.com. And if you go in the show notes, there is a link that will take you out there. And take a look around, guys. It is a very, very good way to save yourself some time, which is huge. And they may be better at the task than you are, so you never know. Definitely check out Fiverr.com. They have saved me so much hassle, so much time, and helped me produce better content for you, my listeners. Now, without further ado, enjoy the episode. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Dave with Military Millionaire, and I am here with the Matt Faircloth. Yes, the Bigger Pockets author. You may have seen his uh, YouTube channel, The DeRosa Group. He's the author of Raising Private Capital. And obviously, he's been around for a while doing some fantastic things in the real estate world. Uh, and we decided that we wanted to do a fun podcast and talk to you guys about, well, you will see. So, Matt, welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. It's been an honor to be here. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah. Uh, why don't you just give, your, give a quick introduction to yourself and then we're going we're gonna to have some fun today. Yeah, man. No problem. Um, so, I got started, uh, let's say I 
uh, I'll go. I'll, I'll go all the way back. Uh, I went to Virginia Tech for college, and I went there because I wanted to. Because I was, I'm going to go study engineering, and I did that because people were like, "Hey, you're good at math and science, so you should be an engineer." So I was like, "Okay, awesome, I'll do that." And I just followed the advice of adults. Um, not realizing what an engineer did, you know, like, like, Hey, that's all they, that's the, the adults are telling me I should be an engineer. So I will, that's what I'll do. And so I majored in that. And then my senior year, we had an internship at a, at a factory with other engineers. And I'm like, this sucks, man. I don't want to do this. You know, like, I don't want to, like, this is like sitting on a desk and, you know, like just kind of, I want to be with people and up and around. I just, it just did not jive with my personality. Um, and so I had to go alternative and I found a job for a company that was looking for a technical sales rep that had a degree in engineering that sold to the guy on the desk, you know, and I was like, Hey, that, that I could do, I could do sales. So I jumped into the sales role, did really well with it. Um, but just felt like there was more in me than that. <clears throat> and my, um, like girlfriend at the time, uh, got me to read rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, Hey, this is an amazing book. This is really changing my perspective on life, you know? And so because of that book, I ended up, uh, buying a house hack, you know, buying a, um, there's 26, 27 years old, probably bought a, um, three bedroom, two bath for 150 grand just outside of Philly. Um, mortgage payment was 940 bucks a month. Had two of my buddies living with me, paying me 500 a piece. Um, so I was, I was making 60 bucks a month and living there for free. Um, which, and I was still making almost six figures selling industrial equipment, right? So I paid off, in two years, I paid off all my credit cards, all my student loans, um, uh, paid off everything, got myself pretty much bad debt free um, in that, and then was ready to move on and ended up marrying that girl that gave me the, uh, the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. So, you know, and, and her and I started buying real estate. Before we got married, we started buying real estate together while we were dating. Which I don't recommend your audience doing, but we uh, yeah. started, and I borrowed money from her dad, borrowed money from my girlfriend's father to buy real estate. Oh yeah, um, that's not. <laughs> thank God it worked. No, out. <laughs> worked out. Made not as woman out of her eventually, but it, it we worked out. But I don't recommend that. Um, and then we, um, you know, soon started my company, the Derosa Group, soon after, um, and and kind of never looked back since. I would quit my job in two thousand and five when we got married, and and um, was able to live off of her income. So there's a lot of nuggets in there that we can expand on, but that's, uh, that's my brief story. Now we're in apartment buildings. We own an office complex, um, own a smattering of single family homes and, and, um, some other, uh, some other real estate ventures and that, but that's pretty much, I spent a lot of my time, uh, finding deals, raising capital from private investors to do those deals with us and assembling a team to execute the deal. Well, it's funny. I, I had planned on at some point asking you how, how you recommend or how you got your wife on board so much, but it sounds like she got you on board. She so. did. No, she wanted a bigger life first. She came to me. I was kind of like, just felt like something was missing in my life and felt like there was more in me than what I was, um, than what I was living into. You know, I just felt like that, that I could be living up here or I had more to give the world more to be than I was being at the time. And just as a traveling sales rep, it was fun, you know, work from home, company car, drive around, you know, put like 40,000 miles a year on my car, um, on, on this company car. Cause it's constantly behind the wheel. Listen to a lot of, okay, that's a lot of audio books and podcasts. If you're, if you have, if there was no such listen. thing back then. There was this oh. thing as a podcast. I listened to a lot of audio books. I became fluent yeah. in Italian driving around. Um, I listened to a ton of like spiritual motivation stuff a lot again, then eventually real estate stuff and everything like that. So just listening to CDs and stuff like that. And I became, I became back in the, I think we still do this back in the day. You could go into a cracker barrel. Okay. And rent an audio book from cracker barrel. And then you could return it at another cracker barrel. Oh, that's great. Right? Yeah. So I became like Cracker Barrel, you know, MVP, like, you know, customer of the customer of the year award or whatever, because I was in Cracker, Bar Cracker Barrels all the time getting audiobooks, renting audiobooks from them. Cause I, I don't know if you, I guess you can still do that, but this is before audible.com. This is before any of that stuff. Yeah. Was around. So that's cool. And so for those yeah. of you who don't know, uh, Liz and she has her own podcast as well. Um, they're they're awesome. So I was in the Bigger Pockets conference, sitting ready to ready to hear Liz talk, and Matt comes in. The room was so packed 
that yeah. they were like, uh, the hotel came in basically and was like, you guys can't do this. You got to kick people. It wasn't the hotel. It was bigger pockets. Oh, okay, the bigger okay. pockets people came in and they didn't know what to do because they'd <laughs> never been. Listen, I've been to so many conferences. You For me and over. her, that was nothing. We just walked. It was like, oh, this is a problem. I'll fix it. So yeah. we go in the room, started to take over the story, but like, it's like a 200 seat room. And no shit, like 400 people showed up to hear my wife talk. God bless. Hey, you know, that's my girl. So they put her in this tiny little room and 400 people show up for it. And Bigger Pockets gets on the microphone and like, this is a fire hazard. All these people, you need to leave. Everybody in the hallway needs to get out of there. And the fire marshal, there's other conferences. There's other speakers for you to go to. I was like, I pretty much just took the microphone from her. And I was like, no, 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 we're not, you can't tell these people that. Just don't do that, right? And I was like, all right, here's the deal. All you people that are here, I kind of sort of know what my wife's going to talk about, right? So I'm going to go and paraphrase it for you. And I don't know where we're going to go, but we're going to go somewhere. And we're going to leave this room. And I'm going to take all you guys somewhere. And I'm going to give you lots of value, you know, and we're just going to go. Right. And so everybody in the hallway followed me. People in the standing in the people standing in the aisle, Dave. Like it was crazy. Oh yeah. People standing all around the room. And I'm just like, listen, everybody's standing. If you're not in a seat, just follow me. Right. So this like 150, 200 people followed me. And we just found this courtyard. And I went outside and I thought, you know, we remember that hotel, right? Oh, the, yeah. the, 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 right. It, it was like a city. Yeah. It was like a it was like a little village, you know. There are countries overseas that are lo- that have less square footage than that hotel does. You know? Yeah, absolutely. It's crazy. So we walk out and there's the hotel had a lot of um mock outdoor space where like it was a gargantuan sunroom or whatever where you'd feel like you're outside, but you're really not, right? So we see this outside area and I'm like, that's one of those little cool outside screened in with a glass roof kind of places. Let's go out there with a waterfall and all that. So we go out. I realize this is not one of those outside places, the one of those screened in places. This is for real outside and it's also raining, you know? And I'm like, oh shit, so what are we going to do? So we were already out and like 150 people were behind me and I'm like, oh, I guess we're just going to go stand in the rain. <laughs> so like, I stand up on this table and all these people gather around me like I'm a freaking preacher at the waterfront or something like that, you know? Like stand, I stand up on this chair and for an hour and a half just – answer questions and gave value and all that. And it was one of, it was one of my finer, like impromptu pull a rabbit out of my sleeve. <laughs> you know, oh, it was great. you were still talking. So I was in like the front row. Cause I'd been in that. I just realized how busy. That yeah. Was. You're like, I'm not leaving my I seat, never man. Moved again. Yeah. This I was is like, my I'm chair. And yeah, uh, I would have to open fire to get me out of the seat. Right. Yeah. But you guys, you guys were still talking when I came outside and, and heard the rest of you talking whenever that was done. So. Well, Liz had somebody in the back of the room giving her like a 10 minute warning, five yeah. minute warning. I didn't have that. I missed lunch that day because I was still up there talking and, the, and all those poor people that all sitting around me did too. Right. Cause I didn't know. I was like, I'll just keep on riffing, man. I'd be oh, out there right man. now still. If it, somebody didn't at least say, Hey, listen, it's like, getting dark out we should probably go inside <laughs> oh yeah you know, that was good times good times yeah yeah yeah. oh that's too funny all right so mm-hmm. um one of the questions i normally ask towards the end of the show but uh we're gonna right, what the hell more in the middle and uh we're gonna wing this whole thing is is what do you think like if an 18 19 20 year old asks you for advice for how to get started in real estate investing what do you think would be the first thing you tell them? And then we can kind of, we can kind of dig into that. Let's, let's see. Well, young man, you know, um, <laughs> I, I would, well, first of all, I, I commend an 18 and 19 first, like before anything else. Right. I think it's awesome that an 18, 19 year old is even thinking about something alternative, like getting themselves into real estate, alternative wealth building and all that. But yeah. right. Let's go with the butt first. Right. Yep, yep. 18, 19 year old, my friend, I listen to this or even listen, you could let's, let's not, you know, let's not discriminate. It could be a 22 year old, it could be a 24 year old, it could be 38 year old, whatever it is, right? You are not going to, in, unless you catch lightning in a bottle, right? Um, you're not going to invest in real estate, build a real estate business for six months and then go sip my ties on the beach and not have to work, right? Um, <clears throat> investing in real estate is not about not having to work and it's not about not having to hustle to build what you want to build. It doesn't have to be 80, 90 hours a week. Um, and a lot of people look at guys like Brandon Turner, who's my, you know, absolutely look up to him in a lot of different ways. But Brandon, I think a lot, I, you know, I happen to know he worked his ass off to get where he's at, you know, and now, you know, gets to live in an awesome location with his family and surf half the day and where it still works too, by the way. But that was not a over the night, overnight success thing, right? 
Um, and I think a lot of people that are 18, 19, 20 years old need to hear that, yes, it's an alternative life. And yes, there are a ton of rewards. And yes, it can be extremely lucrative. Um, but it requires a shit ton of work. And it'll probably kick your butt a few times before you get there. Um, and you'll end up with a lot of scars, but it'll be worth it. How's that sound? You know, that's the first thing is you got to get in touch with this will not be easy. And that's okay, because it'll be awesome. But it's not going to be easy. You agree? Oh, I absolutely agree. And it will never, ever, ever, ever go as smoothly as you think it should or could go. Oh, man. Because the guy who had a wonderful contractor referred to him by several different people you trust, and all of their projects are going great. And I'm five months down the road waiting on the city inspector to tell me if I got to undo the stuff he did. Yeah. Yeah. Just Bro, it, it, Dave, there are human beings and then there are contractors. You know? <laughs> They're just not the same breed. They're they're different species. I think that they are from another planet, like planet screw you or something oh, like it's, that. It's, you know? it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's still there's still money to be made in the deal. It's just my my yeah. wife was talking to a friend of hers uh, that was just getting going in real estate, and the woman she was talking to, not a friend of hers, from her invest her community, um, and the woman was in tears because she thought that she might lose fifty grand on a deal. You know. And my wife like consoled her and talked her down and all that. And my wife and I were just kind of like shrugging over dinner. And I was like, man, I'd write a check for 50 grand to only have lost 50 grand ever in my real estate career. You know, <laughs> I mean, like uh, it, this business will like really, really hit you hard. I think I got my gray hair because of it and all that. But it's, you know, listen, I'm grateful because I, I've made more than I lost, you know, but it does, it, it can humble you because there's a lot, there are thieves in this business. There are um, people that will, that are shysters. And you said contractors, you need to deal with people and there's miscommunications as well. Like there's sometimes things just, you know, shit falls apart, you know? Um, anyway, going back to the 18, 19 year old bottom line, this business hits back hard and it will be hard, but it's worth it. Right. So, but it's, it's not going to be simple and you're not going to just get to be lazy and work three hours a week to manifest your real estate millions. Right. That's number one. Number two, I think that an 18, 19, 20, or just getting started year old, right, has options in this business. And so I don't think there is a specific path for an 18, 19, 20 year old. Um, and let's, you know, let's you and I actively discuss the options, right? The one yeah. that I, that's, that a lot of them I think gravitate to, and I think this might be a mistake, but a lot of them go there automatically is I don't have money. So I'm going to go and participate in an activity for a little bit to generate some money so that I can then take that money and invest in real estate, right? So that activity could be something like I will go and wholesale or I will go and flip so that I can buy rentals. I meet so many people that want to go out and buy, that, that want to wholesale their way to rentals or wholesale their way or flip their way to rentals. Do you talk to people like this? Oh yeah. In fact, I've had people tell me that I need to do that. In fact, I'm, I've been guilty of that when I, I told you before me too. Show that I'm involved in that lawsuit. And I was like, I have no capital right now. I'm going to flip this house so that I can build some more capital. And mm -hmm. so, sometimes it's a viable strategy. I'm, I'm going to end up doing the burr and just refinancing and holding onto it as a long-term rental. Um, mm -hmm. But, but yeah, the wholesale game, the, the flip game. Yep. So many pros and cons, but it's not, it's not renewable. And the problem is, well, what, I mean, there's problems, but uh, a lot of those, a lot of people in the wholesale game, <clears throat> it's a flashy game. It's a sales game and they go and they, they make their money and then they don't spend it on real estate. They buy a Mercedes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Or like the, if you believe the guys that shoot the YouTube videos, they go and buy a Ferrari. You've mm -hmm. seen the videos of the guy driving around in the Ferrari with like checks and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, I'll just shoot a YouTube video to market my real, my, my wholesaling program that you should go buy. And this is me in a Ferrari you know, driving around, you know? Okay. Those are all fake by the way, guys, you know, maybe that is a guys rent I know who actually own the fancy car they show showcase. Yeah. That is a rented Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah. But, but for most of them it is, but yeah, no, I know a few guys that do too. Um, in that, and they're very vocal about like, Hey man, this is my fucking car. You know, like this is, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't rent this thing. Um, but anyway, um, so that that's one that I, one option I think a lot of people go to is to wholesale their way to rentals. Now, there's nothing wrong with wholesaling, but wholesaling was, don't get, don't get me wrong. Wholesaling is a business. It is not a way to make a check or two. Flipping is a business. It's not a way to get a check or two. And if you look at people like Jay Scott, Jay Scott like made 
a ton of money flipping houses. So it can be done. It can be done with systems and processes and repeatable stuff. But Jay did it with systems and processes. And that's how he flipped probably hundreds or even thousands of homes in his career of real estate. And he's bought very few rentals, but he's made tons of money flipping houses um, and, and tons of money, you know, doing other ventures that spawned off of that. And eventually it can get invested in rentals, but don't get me wrong, that is a business. There are guys that I know that are wholesaling 10, 15, 20, you know, people that are doing even more than that on the wholesale business, but guess what? That's a business, right? Oh, yeah. And they might be pulling down north of a hundred grand a month in, in their wholesale fees, but I'll believe, believe me, they built that machine. So if you're going to do that, then do that. If you're going to, if you're the 18, 19, 20 year old and wholesaling speaks to you by being in the middle of a deal and the hustle and to find the opportunity and to systematize it and find it and drive for dollars and then go out and hustle and find the owner and make 10, 15, 20 grand each time you do a deal. Awesome. It can be very lucrative and it can be fun. It's exciting, you know? Um, so do that. Just do that. And eventually grow into rentals. But don't say I'm gonna wholesale two deals to make it to make thirty grand so I can go buy a rental property. I know very few people that did it that way. What do yeah. you think? No, absolutely. Um I mean it, it, I find that yeah, the few people I know who aren't like full time wholesalers that have any luck, it's more like an exit strategy where they, if they find a house that everything works out on <clears throat> and they're like, I don't have the time to do this or whatever, then they'll just kind of like as a side and oftentimes they'll like wholesale it to a wholesaler for a really mm -hmm. small fee and just let them deal with it. Um, but don't get me wrong. Those people that are doing that, they would much rather buy that property as a rental. Their goal, yeah. their primary function is buying rentals. And the question is what's your primary function is, are you going to primary function as buying a rental property? Great. If you find a deal that doesn't work for you as a rental, maybe you can go wholesale it as a plan B. So that's, you're right. I know a lot of people that do that as a plan B or have flips as a plan B or whatever, but um, take it from somebody who knows. I went in a lot of different directions when I first got started and I, um, I, I, I failed in a lot of ways because I, I had like flips going on, wholesales going on, buying rentals and everything like that. You can only go in but so many directions and do it all well. You can do it all mediocrely and then you'll end up getting robbed on three of your, three of your four ventures that you got going on or you'll end up half-assing at three or four ventures and you'll end up either losing money or not making as much as you could if you just focused, you know? Um, so that's number one. That's, you know, pick yeah. a direction. Uh, you know, uh, other 18, 19 year old tips. Um, consider interning for a larger, uh, a larger, more successful company, um, or finding a seat on their bus, you know, and larger companies, um, including, you know, and let's keep picking on them, but people like Brandon have brought people on his bus. Um, and I've done it too, that have some sort of skill that I can, you know, pour some water and some sunshine on and grow into something, you know? Um, so find, someone who's successful either on bigger pockets or through your network or whatever and be willing to just thank you sir may i have another you know and 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 make not that much in exchange for learning a ton and maybe negotiate some equity for yourself or negotiate a deal to work your tail off for somebody who's already has a successful business you gotta find a way to add value you know yeah. to to their company a good uh if you listen to uh, was it two weeks ago the bigger pockets episode that uh, with Ryan Burdock on it. Yeah, I um, love that guy. He, oh yeah, but he talks about how he got to where he is working right next to Brandon. <clears throat> and it wasn't by just like saying, hey, can I be your, can you mentor me? Like it was through very intentional, like I'm gonna find this way to add value. Now I'm gonna keep this way to add value. Um, that's a great point. I listened to that episode and there's everybody that's listening to this should listen to the right. If you're the 18, 19, 20 year old or 38 year old, whatever, listen to the Ryan Murdoch episode of the bigger pockets podcast, because he talks about, he didn't just, I listen, David, I wish I had like a nickel for a person that emailed me on BP or emailed oh, me or whatever. And I'm just going to be cocky, but people that email me say, Hey, listen, can I come pick your brain? Can you come give me some advice? Can I work for you? Listen, you're giving me a burden to figure out what to do with you. Right. Instead, Ryan Murdoch got to know what Brandon wanted and got to know where Brandon was wanting to go and heard Brandon say on the Bigger Pockets podcast, I want to buy a mobile home park. So Brian <laughs> went out. Utilities and city sewer. <laughs> yeah, said what he wanted. Mm. You know, hey, not for nothing, smart on Brandon. Put it out there, you know? Yep. Um, but, um, and then Ryan heard that and said, hey, let me go help this guy meet his goals, 
you know, um, and figure out what this guy wants and listen to him and say, hey, listen, he wants this. Let me help him get that, you know. And before you know it, Ryan is freaking living in the guest house in Hawaii with Brandon Turner, helping him buy, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of mobile home parks. God bless. Then yeah. it all happened by just paying attention to what somebody who's a little bit further along with you wants and how you can add value. Look at it, you know. Um, anyway, that's, not, that's option number two. Find somebody to add value. Um, the, the option number three, and you referred to uh, your wife. So this is kind of tangential slightly, but in working with your spouse, um, I was able to convince my wife in the dream of real estate. We both wanted what real estate would create for us. And we were willing to do something crazy, which not many Americans want to do these days, but we decided to live below our means. <gasps> You know, you mean you didn't like, you know, you weren't like spending 12,000 a month while you were making 8,000 a month, you know, my wife lives <laughs> yeah. in a barn right now. What's that? <laughs> so my wife lives in a barn right now. I don't know if we ever mentioned this. So long story short, tell me, I want to hear you so I'm, about that. I'm, I'm getting out of the military. I got stationed in San Diego. I've got two years left on contract. She gets her, I say dream job, but she was working as a high school counselor. She loved the job. It got offered to her right as we were moving here. And I was like, babe, just take it. And I'll be back in two years. It gives me two years to build a business. We visit all the time, whatever. But her parents have a, he's a cattle farmer. So he has this monstrous barn and he basically put a wall up on one portion of it. And so down the side of a barn with no walls in between, it's like kitchen slash laundry room, bathroom that has like three little, three little cinder block walls and then two beds. And they're just living in kind of an ADU for free while literally 50 to 100 yards away is our primary residence being rented and cash flow. Because I was like, nope, sorry, you're not taking that. Yes, man. So. That is awesome. That is awesome, man. Well, I'm you Airbnb being rooms because I'm like, I need to make up for San Diego prices. So, right, right. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what you got to do, do what you got to do, right? If you're not willing to do whatever it takes for your real estate business, you might not be cut out for this thing because um, my wife and I lived on savings and ate ramen noodles for a year, kind of thing. Like, didn't take a vacation for a little while because, you know, just we'd rather, we'd rather that vacation would have cost us one month worth of monthly expenses. And so it's like, I'd rather give this thing a shot for one more month versus take you to the Caribbean. And I said, now we go to the Caribbean whenever we want, if we want to, right? So in exchange for longer term wealth, longer term success, we're willing to make some sacrifices now. So we lived in a house when we first got married, we lived in a house that was half of what we could afford. I still had that traveling sales job um, right when we got married and I quit it the, at the end of that year, at the end of that calendar year. Um, but we could have qualified for a four or $500,000 house. We bought a $200,000 house, right? Um, so we could afford the mortgage payment off of her salary, right? Only without me working. And then we talked about it and prayed on it and thought about it. And it's like, hey, what should we do? And it's like, yeah, it just came up. I was like, man, you really hate what you do. And you're, you need to give, we need to give this thing a shot. So I quit my job uh, at the end of 2005. And it was only because we were able to do that. Two reasons. Number one, because we live below our means, you know, and my wife would totally live in a barn too. You know, like she'd be right there oh, where yeah. she'd be shacking up with your wife. They'd be, you know, hanging out and cooking and cooking ramen noodles together, you know, and like, it's fine. Figure it the fuck out. Right. Um, because that's what it takes. But you got to, your spouse has to be willing to do whatever it takes in that environment. And a lot of people listening, their spouses are not willing to do whatever it takes. And that's, listen, that's okay. Everybody, it's, that's not, that doesn't mean you can't invest in real estate. That might yeah. mean you may have a conversation with your spouse on what's possible with investing in real estate and talk about the long-term vision. That's number one, living below our needs. This means the second thing we did, and I don't know if you guys did this too, but we held off on having kids for a little while. Oh, no, right? we totally screwed that up. There you go. Yeah, Not a boy. <laughs> well, you get kids. She, you get... she had one when I met her. So we were, we were way off. Oh, you're already in. Yeah, you're so already she, one kid deep, right? Okay. She had a five-year-old and then uh, she's a little older than I am. So when, by the time we got married, um, it was basically like, so if we're going to do this, we need to do it right now. Otherwise you're not yeah. going to want to have kids. So we were very quick. Um, and then it was like <laughs> one snip, no more. All right. Focus. Um, yeah, so, me know. too. I had two kids, I had two kids in a vasectomy. So, hmm. um, right. Yep, that yeah, seems yeah, like the magic it. combo, the one, two, punch. it is. I had a boy, I had a boy and a girl. What else you want, man? I mean, what would I want? Like make another, I need to build a baseball team. You know, I mean, no, I'm good. I got, I got two kids. One, you know, I got a boy and a girl, you know, my father-in-law had four, no, three girls. My father-in-law did trying to get a boy. I'm like, that Oh sounds, shit. I got lucky, man. Like I got a boy and a girl. I'm done. That's it. I don't need any surprises. Uh, anyway, we delayed 
because Smart. kids, you know what? You know how it is, man. Kids oh. are little expense magnets, man. And their time need, sucks. Their time sucks and money sucks. They're need machines. Mm. And so if uh, they just crank out need, need things all the time, right? And it's cool. I love them. I, I love my kids, but I'm grateful we waited a little bit. Anyway, I know you guys didn't, you just figured it out, right? So consider, I'm not saying don't have kids to your listeners, but at the end of the day, if you want to, and if your spouse is really enrolled in having kids and maybe it's like, hey, listen, can we wait like a year so I can try and get this real estate thing going? Can you give me that? You know, and then we can, you know, have as many kids as you want, right? Um, or, or maybe give me two years, give me three years, whatever it is. Um, but maybe make that compromise with your, with your spouse or have that, you know, give and take discussion to make sure both your needs get met. And it's not like, you know, this has to kill that. It's like, okay, you want kids or you want this lifestyle and this big house. I want to give a shot at real estate. How can we find a way to make both these things work? You know? Um, and if you get yourself out of the, it won't work because of, and start having the, how can we conversations, um, possibilities open up and focus on win, win, you know, instead of like, oh, she has to lose so that I can win. Focus on win-win, meaning like, how can we, like, like, let me blow your mind. How can we both get what we want and be really happy and align as a couple and 100% support each other and be super excited about the life we're living together and not feel like we just had to give something up so the other one could get something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure Matt would agree with this. So we say live below your means and we talk about all this budgeting, but um, you're allowed to still like live a little like yeah. live below your means doesn't mean that you say, Ooh, I would buy that $50 book. Uh, I don't know. Not book, but ah, uh, you know, but we're saving money. Like every now and then yeah. it's okay. Like you got to prioritize what you, what is important. No, you prioritize what you spend money on. And we would spend money on personal growth. We'd spend money on books. We'd spend money on, and like, listen, maybe I didn't do the $30,000 vacation to Italy or the $10,000 trip to the Caribbean or whatever, but we lived in Jersey, right? So it's like, well, fuck it. I'll go to the Jersey shore for the day or I'll go get a season pass to six flags and go ride roller coasters to get my yayas out. You know, I mean yeah. like, or whatever it is and that cost me 80 bucks for the year. Right. So you just have to make decisions that are based on like, how can I meet that need of going to go enjoy myself, have fun, let my hair down, um, without just with auto budget. Right. And so you can do that. If you're willing to be creative, you can do that. And it's again, not to like be too corny, but you know, I love the Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Right. Think about that. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And so if one of your listeners is like, I can't do that. I can't invest in real estate. I can't convince my spouse to invest in real estate too. I can't get her on my team. I can't do this. I, you know, okay, listen, man. Hey, guess what? I got good news for you. You're right. You can't because <laughs> you don't think you can. But if you're willing to open up possibilities and figure it out, then it'll come, the ideas will come to you, you know, on, oh, on how, how you can figure it out, on how you can, you know, have a nice vacation without spending above your budget. You know, I always love when people see like, I'll post a, like a house hacking thing or something. And it's like an infographic that says like, buy a hundred thousand dollar home. You know, all the numbers are based on that. And immediately it's inevitable. There's always one, two, three. <clears throat> oh, if only that yeah, but not in my neighborhood. You can you like, buy that property. To right. which I comment and I'm like, I live in your neighbor. Like I'm in San Diego County right now. I'm Airbnb one room and it paid for 75% of my, my rent last month. And I'm starting a second room next month and I'll be essentially living not only for free, but I should be cash flowing and done, worked. Yeah. It's like the numbers worked. It's just, you gotta find the right property. Don't focus on the, on the dollar sign. Focus on the strategy. Yeah, yeah. And just get yourself out of the possibility of it won't work, you yeah, know, because yeah. that's, you're right. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't get creative, you know, and you want to live in the, it's easier if things don't work. You don't, have to, you don't have to do anything if things don't work. You can just sit back and cross your arms and say, see, I can't do this. I can't buy real estate in my neighborhood. I can't, I I can't make it work because I don't have any money or my credit score is low or I'm too old or my wife won't let me, whatever. That's way easier to say that. It actually takes a lot more courage to figure it out. <laughs> Especially when you end up with like $50,000 in personal loan and credit card debt and you're like, wait, this is good? 
What's oops? Yeah. <laughs> not I'm looking for a uh, my I'm looking on my wife's bookshelf. It's not up there, but she's got the best little sign that says, you know, I mean, again, I, I don't recommend people making a freaking mess and then having to clean it up. But that's yeah. what we did. Um, yeah. But we had to live by the mantra. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only option you have. Mm. Right. Yep. Um, and so my wife and I made this gargantuan financial mess and had to work our asses off with no other option to get it clean. Right. And that was, that was years ago and we've gotten it where we wanted it to be because there were, the boats were burned, man. You know, um, the, the boats were burned. We couldn't, we could not turn back. And so I, I recommend to people to, to I just something, just a little bit of nugget. You have, you have no idea what you're capable of. Like you're actually capable of way more than you think. If you're walking around talking about it, you can't do stuff, you can't do this, you can't do this. Now, you know what? Your wife probably would live in a barn if she had to. And if, if it meant like, you know, creating great financial wealth and like living the life of her dreams later, or if that was the option that she had, she'd make the best of it and probably would have a ball with it and like find joy in there, you know? So it's funny. We say this, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is one of the biggest benefits for service members is that at a young age, we have a huge and, and I would say disproportionate ability to take on risks which, mm -hmm. okay, sure, that's risky, whatever, but can work hugely in your favor if you're willing to do it intelligently. So you come out of, you, you figure two 22 year olds, you got someone with $100,000 in college debt and just starting a job, or you got someone who theoretically has no debt unless they bought the stupid car that service members like to buy. Let them do. Theoretically has no debt, has a salary, and if everything else falls apart, even like right now when I've got all these properties, if every single thing failed and I had to file bankruptcy, I would have a job. I would have my housing paid for. I would have my food paid for. I would still have life insurance. I would still have health insurance. My family would still be taken care of. If like everything went wrong, I just move on to base. Like I can afford to take those risks because I yeah. know okay. So like people don't realize the government gives you a heck of a safety net. You yeah, know, yeah. and they give you a heck of a reward for what you're doing for the country, you know, um, especially if you are, you know, going closer to conflict and putting yourself further out there to where to, to the to the edge of where, you know, like there, there's yeah. major things going on. There's heavy compensation in exchange oh, yeah. for that. And they're paying you and they're giving you three hots and a cot while you're over there, you know, um, and all that. And they, but you're still you're still being compensated. Right. So you got no your expenses are in essence zero. Right. Yep. Um, and you're and making your a, tax free. Yeah. Oh, is it tax free? I said, I, know, I didn't get paid in a combat zone is not taxed. A lot of people think I did. I did not serve, you know, but a lot of, a lot of people think I did just cause I'm aligned I with our military. Say, I'm impressed that you knew the three hots and a cots phrase rather than like saying food. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around a lot of military people. I have a lot of military friends, a lot of, you know, and I associate with a lot of, a lot of my investors are military. I have friends, a lot of people like you that are and all that. So I come off like that, but, uh, but I'm not, and I've got a gargantuan American flag behind me in my office and everything like that. And it's cause I love my country. Um, I'm grateful for, for people that did serve, but I did not myself, but I get that there are so many benefits to doing it. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, I'll, I'll go even further. If you're 18 years old and you're still, I, I get people that email me that are like, Hey, I'm 18 years old. I'm in high school. What should I do? You know? Um, I hadn't thought about this, but it could, my, one of my recommendations might be enlist, you know, enlist cause you'll get, you know, zero college, you'll get an education, you'll get zero student loans. I mean, if you're smart enough, try and get one of the academies cause then it's like a great education. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a hurdle to get in there and you got to shake some trees to get into the academy and not everybody can make it. But if you can, you know, and that's like the world's your oyster, you know, oh, and yeah, I mean, yeah. you could be making a full salary at 45 years old in retirement, you know? Um, but anyway, en enlistment could be a possibility and a lot of people look down upon it, but there's a ton of benefits in exchange for doing it. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to end up, you know, in, in the desert with a rifle. There's a lot of, I mean, Am I, am I right? I don't know. You could probably speak oh, to that. I mean, you're a recruiter, right? I, I, oh yeah. I was a recruiter for three years, uh, which means that from now on, nobody's going to believe anything I say. Um, that's the stigma, right? <laughs> all, all bullshitters. But um, I recruited my wife. So I think I did okay as a recruiter. I was actually, I was actually very successful. Um, is that how you met her? Yeah. She was a counselor in my biggest high school, which is, uh, I don't want to say frowned upon, but there's no rule against it. The general consensus is any faculty member in a school is a no, no, because if you break up with them, they could totally ruin your relationship with the school as far as business mm. goes. But hey, it worked out. We're four years down the road and we got kids. So um, God bless. You're good. Yeah, You're locked yeah, in. Right. I, I survived. It's funny. Everybody in my command knew except for like 
the CEO. He was like, everybody was like, just don't tell that guy and you'll be fine. But tell me more, like, if, if you oh. were talking to the 18-year-old, why, why should they, uh, is there benefit to an 18-year-old enlisting if they, I mean, I want to hear like the I'm recruiter's a, perspective on I'm it. I'm a so. huge fan because, so for one, um, by the time I, everybody was graduating college and trying to figure out what they were going to do, I'd already seen, I'd lived in Japan for two years. I'd been in Afghanistan for eight months, which as you said about the sand thing, honestly, that's probably some of my best times in my life. Like mm. there is, there's no stress. Well, I say there's no stress. It's a different kind of stress. It's like an adventure. We, you know, the whole, like we might die today or whatever. Or I might drive over another bomb today or whatever. Like, yeah, it sucks, but you're with like, for me, it was all guys at the time, but it's like, you're with the guys that are your family and you have like one job. It was like, wake up, work out, do the mission, come back, eat, work out, do the mission, like hang out with the guys, bullshit all day. Um, you have no bills, like all your, I mean, you can turn off your phone bill, like you can freeze almost every bill you have while you're deployed. There's savings programs that, like we have a, a savings deployment program where you can just stack cash, <coughs> guaranteed by And the you get the equivalent of, interest. I know this is what you guys call it, but there's an equivalent of like hazard pay that you get yep. yeah, yeah. Um, for going over there. And I get, and you should, because yeah. although you might not be directly in the front line, you are putting your life at risk in exchange I had, for the kind. Uh, and I blew money on, at the time I smoked, I blew money on cigarettes and uh, DVDs and, and workout supplements and stuff while I was there. That was about all I could spend money on. But even with spending that money, I mean, I had close to 20 grand when I left Afghanistan after seven months and I was 19. Um, yep. and that's no debt. And then of course I bought a Harley a car a tattoo <laughs> and all the other dumb shit. You're that guy. Right. Oh, yeah. totally, totally that guy. So it's hard for, to be 19 and not do some dumb shit, man. I got a yeah. tattoo also that I bought not too late after 19. I mean, it's one of those things is like, Hey, this is an awesome idea. No, it's really not. It's so by not. By the time um, my friends are graduating from college, I've lived out of state or out of country. I've lived out of, I've lived in San Diego. You had I've money in your pocket. Had money in my pocket. I'd been in 13 countries. No um, debt. Yeah, no debt. My college was already paid for. I was actually, I had taken some classes. I have an associate's degree um, that, that has been done for free. I could continue, but I just decided when I get out, I'm going to use it. Because um, I, I have some intricacies. I actually got a, a unique, like, not bonus, but like a, a kicker to my college um, that I can use, <clears throat> but I can't give to my kids. So hmm. it's... So it's more beneficial for me to go to school because I have a, essentially a $50,000 extra living expense while I'm going to school um, that I couldn't pass them. So, I'm like, so oh, I just you got, it. you got a bucket full of benefits in oh, being yeah. involved. My school's going to be paid for. I'm going to get paid uh, in Missouri. I'll be making like two or $3,000 a month for my living expenses while going to school if I don't work. Yeah. Why you're still building a real estate investing business, why you're still making money doing other things, why you're still, yeah. I mean, yeah. you could take that, if you're smart, you could take that two to three grand a month. And I mean, there, I, I assume the military is not going to give a shit if you go and rent yourself. Like, let's, I, oh, hey, listen, I'm going to go rent a five bedroom, three bath house, right? Yep. Um, like, like a monster. And I'm going to go and rent out all, all the bedrooms in the house, you know, and, and Airbnb, that thing, well, or, or I'm you know. I'm going to use the VA loan and buy a fourplex. There you go. Oh, wait, so you use VA loan to buy the fourplex, Don't then a two to three down. grand a month covers your mortgage, right? Yep. And then you're making, so you're living there for free because the, 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 you're making, you're living there for free because the two to three grand is covering your living expense. And then you're making direct pocket cash flow on the other three units, right? Yep. And Sick. I didn't put, a, and I put 0% down on the property. And my guess is that you're not the only person that could pull that off with the oh, military. I, I, it's wonderful. Some of the benefits you can use with that loan. Yeah, there's actually, and no. people don't even know about it. In the last two or three years, the VA renovation loan has cut, so that we have a version of the 203k that's, I mean, way better uh, in terms of how much it'll lend on, and also zero down, provided that the you know after after the all in cost is less than the ARV. Um, yeah. So I mean, you could essentially move into a brand new fourplex mm -hmm. for zero down. So it's mm -hmm. it's a pretty solid pretty solid off option. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I listen, it, it's, it's great. And I think that it gets poo pooed upon. It gets frowned upon sometimes by, you know, parents where they're like, Oh, no, no, I don't want my kid to go and, you know, get blown up, whatever. The odds of that are, 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 are very slim. And there's a lot of different ways the military can apply you. And there's so many benefits for being a part of it that you, why wouldn't you, you know, at least consider it if, if you're 18, 19 years old and you want an alternative life. Um, 
the military can give that to you and you know, so can allow you to invest and build a real estate business. Cause like there's, you don't have to be in the military until you're 65 years old. You can get out a lot earlier than that and still carry a lot of those benefits with you for the rest of your life. So not that you and I are just doing this like recruiting commercial here, but that is another thing that an 18, 19 year old could do, um, in, in investing. Well, we, yeah. And as somebody who was one of the very small percentage you mentioned, who's driven over a bomb before, um, yep. it's also, of an even smaller percentage where it actually matters. Like, I, I mean, I have a hearing aid and that's about the gist of, I'm, yeah, 10 years later, still good. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's a very, very, very marginal percentage. Just like everything, dogs are wonderful. But when you hear about a dog bite, it sounds way worse than all the puppies that love on you. So it's- Right, 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 right. That, that's what I, you're right. It's, it's like, I don't want to get a dog because it might bite me, you know? Well, <laughs> Yeah, or I don't. I don't want to get it. I don't. Know, I don't want to fly in an airplane because it might crash. I don't want to get in a car because it might have a wreck or it might blow up or just whatever. Live in the fetal position and you know not. Yeah, crash. right. Yeah, just get an IV of food and not leave my house. You know. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So there's some good options that an 18, 19 year old could do. I mean, again, I, I I get so many people that reach out to me, and my heart goes out to them because I really commend them for thinking about this at that age about about living an alternative life and just. Um, investing and, and doing something different aside from just like drinking the Kool-Aid, going to college, building up $200,000 worth of debt, um, you know, getting a job and, and working until you're 65 years old and crossing your fingers and hoping that social security is still around when you retire, you know? Um, Sounds fun. It, <laughs> yeah, it sounds awesome. It sounds like a big ass gamble all the way up and down the street. People tell, people tell me I'm taking a risk, you know, no, no. like, yeah, I'm sure right. the government Policies will be the exact same in 40 years. Sure. Right. No, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> Way uh, <easier>. yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll make it simpler, right? They'll give us more money, you know? Taxes will go um, down. They will. Yeah. They, 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 you know, it's, it's they're due to go down, right? It's like the stock market's due to crash. Taxes have been going up for so long, they got to come down at some point. And, it, right? and interest rates will be zero at this rate, you know? Oh, so yeah. yeah, why not? You know? Anyway, um, oh, man. so there, there's options if you think about possibilities and expand your mindset about things you can get yourself into at 18, 19 years old or, or older, you know? Absolutely. So, All right. Yeah. So as we uh, kind of draw towards a close on this, um, cause I said 30, 45 minutes and I think we're already there. Uh, I've blown a, past the milestone on so many I'm podcasts, brother. So I mean, not people have been I'll like, talk all day. I'll go on shows. Be like, this will be a 20 minute show. That's what it's going to okay. do. It's what it's going to be. And then I look at my watch and I'm like, shit, we've been talking for 45 minutes. Cause we'll just get on a topic. That's what's great. You know, I was listening to Jordan and I'm not, yeah, I'll, let, well, I'll let you wind down. No, but I was listening to Joe Rogan, right? I love, I love Joe Rogan. Yeah. I was listening to his podcast and his shit's like three hours. You know, I love because it. sometimes it takes that long to get deep and to get into a real conversation with people. Um, and he was like, just that's what's great about podcast is there's no commercial you have to play. There's no sound bite that you're waiting for. It's not like, oh, we can only talk to Matt Freckle for five minutes because then we got to clip over to, you know, talk about this guy or talk about something else or talk about the car crash that happened on the highway or whatever um, on the news or on television or whatever. That's why podcast kick televisions but because television has a bookend a beginning middle and an end that it has to abide by because of the next thing that comes on after that podcast could be uh, you know this show could be 30 minutes could be 40 minutes could be 60 minutes whatever it is yeah and that's why i love it because you can go where the conversations needs to go and then wrap it up versus like i will have to pick that up another time how many times have you seen that on television well i guess we'll have to get back to that no fucking finish it talk about it right now you know like yeah (laughs) Joe Rogan's wonderful. Um, I do. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not I, an MMA guy. I don't listen to the MMA stuff. Um, but uh, I, I listen to, have you heard the guy Jocko? Um, oh yeah. I got to meet oh him my. last month. What's that? I got to meet him last month. It was like one of, really? of my year. Yeah. He spoke at an event I was at and they did the whole meet and greet. We got to talk for a little bit. Oh, he's a phenomenal human being, man. Yeah. You know, and, and quite, uh, I would say inspiring for sure, but definitely intimidating in person. He's, he's every bit the size he looks. So, oh, I've never, uh, oh, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's a big old dude. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 I'll bet. I'll bet. Like, is this going to eat me or is he going to shake my hand? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, he has some great people on his show. Um, in that, I actually, really like the in-person, like that's one of my goals. Like once I'm at a point where I can, I would love to do like what Brandon does where people fly out and interview in person at his house. Like that's what's so, that's what makes the Rogan show so great. I think is that he mandates it. You're yeah, the one, 
We're just gonna there's there's two him. shows that he did that wasn't face to face. One was Edward Snowden, and that guy can't come to America, so he can't be on his yeah. show face to face. I guess Joe could have gone to him to Russia, but he didn't. And another one was somebody else that had to phone in um, on that. But yeah, the face to face, the energy is so different that he can just sit and have a conversation, and you know, and sit there for three hours and all that kind of thing, Smoke and just chat with Elon people. Musk. Right, smoke a blunt, drink bourbon, whatever, <laughs> whatever. you know. I Sounds good. Right. Oh man. All right. Hey, so what's a what's a good resource, book, course, website, whatever that you would recommend for anyone getting started? Obviously, you know, raising private capital, but otherwise. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I think that that uh in general, bigger pockets and the bigger pockets pro program and just listening to bigger pockets and immersing yourself in what they have going on is a great place for me to it's anybody to go. Um to to go and just like you know, get on bigger pockets, read the books, listen to the podcast. There's so much media that they crank out and, and that, and I think it's, it's a good, it's a good place to go to consume. If you're looking to, if you're just getting going, I, I am not a believer in like, you know, guru level $50,000, you, you know, Hey, pay me 50 grand and I'll teach you the secrets of real estate and everything like that. Um, I'm not a fan of that. So I don't believe in those kinds of things. I think that there's a lot of great books out there. Of course, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, you know, just there's so many books. Four Hour Work Week, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that kind of stuff. But of course, my book, Raising Private Capital, if you're looking to, have, if you're looking to work with people with money um, and, and generate some passive investors in your business, that's what the book is there for. And it's not a high-level book. It goes high-level, but it's not intended to be like a graduate level course. It's a book that's entry level, but does a lot of high-level stuff too. So regardless of where you are, my book's there for you. Yeah, it's, it's good for sure. I'm a fan. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Before we wrap this up, is there anything that we missed? Any parting advice or big ideas? We'll just have to have another show. show. We'll just have to oh, talk I'm again. I'm totally down. I'm at, yeah. um, uh, what was the phrase? Uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. Is that what you, <laughs> the TV show say? <laughs> yeah, we'll get back to that. Yeah. I say that a lot. I teach a lot of webinars for BP. And I'm always like, but let's get back to that. And I wonder, like, do I ever get back to that? You know, <laughs> like, you know, like, do I ever actually? Like, well, but I'll tell you about that later. I was like, I hope I do. Just like deflecting all the stuff, like, right? Well, I'll mention something like, well, that has to do with self-directed IRAs, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And I'm like, well, I hope I remember. <laughs> get, you know, like to I know, talk about. You've got like a board that you're writing it down on. Yeah, I know, right? I have like a have like just like a little notepad, like yeah. you need to get back to that conversation. So, anyway, um. But yeah, the people can hear more about what I'm up to at just going to going to derosagroup.com, D-E-R-O-S-A-G-R-O-U-P.com, derosagroup.com. Um, they can uh, hear more about us on our YouTube page by just going to going to youtube.com forward slash derosa group. And I put out content twice a week. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff out there. There's a lot of we have a mentorship Monday program, and a lot of people email me questions that are in the military um, for mentorship Monday. So a lot of my stuff out there is um is answering questions from folks in the military on what they should do with a VA loan or, you know, you're enlisted right now, what should you do, you know, how should you invest, that kind of thing. A lot of that's out there. Awesome. Uh, so I do have one question that I was just curious about that I meant to ask earlier. Sure. Where does DeRosa come from? It's my wife's mother's maiden name. Okay. All right. Cause yeah. I was like, man, that, all right. Very well. That makes sense. It's, but we thought it was like this Paisan kind of don't mess with us, you know, like straight, <laughs> the name had a lot of strength to it and everything like that. So we just, we, we liked it for that standpoint. Yeah. Um, in that, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's it, they didn't found the company. My wife and I did, um, my wife and I are the founders of the company and we're still the operators of the company. Um, but that's, it was, uh, it was just a name that had some familial meaning to it. Yeah. Um, but that, that's where Drosa comes from. No, that makes sense. I like it. I'm glad I asked. I am too. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, I was going to say where can people get a hold of you, but we already did that. So I slipped um, it in there. Yeah. I'm I right threw on. it out there. Like I, you're I a podcast it. pro or something. <laughs> I, I may have done this first, before. First time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, Matt, this has been fun. We will have to do it again. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really enjoyed this, Dave. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great day. You too. Thank you for listening to another episode about my journey from military to millionaire. If you liked it, be sure to visit from militarymillionaire.com slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts. While you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show. Give us a review on iTunes. Now get out there and take action.